and very important when you're riding keep your visor down because something just flew into my visor and stung me Before I left Canada, I decided to spend a couple of days in Surrey with my friend Nathan to get some more R&R &R in place and also take advantage of his beautiful hot tub which he had at the bottom of his garden. So after a few days with Nathan, I headed off down south towards Seattle to meet up with my new friend Tim, whom I met on the road in Canada. And he'd invited me down to spend the night with him and then we'd both ride down to a massive BMW rally in Redmond, Oregon. The viewing point of Mount St Helens, which uh, erupted in 1980, so that's uh, 30 years ago, and this is still the devastation that it caused. Blew the top off the mountain and knocked down all the trees. It's an active crater. So it's still active? It's still active, yeah. Okay, we've uh, just arrived at the uh, BMW rally. Pretty impressive for a bike rally with the mountains in the background. And it is huge. 6,000 bikers. Wow. After a few great days with the BMW rally in Redmond, Oregon, I hadn't got any future plans. So my options were to head east and take in some of the national parks or to go west and head for the coast and ride down the Pacific Coast Highway. And given the fact that the temperatures were horrendously high, well into the hundreds every day, I opted for the cooler option and headed for the coast and go west. So I stayed one night in Bandon, then headed towards Eureka, only because I love the name, and then down to Fort Bragg before making my way to a little town called Petaluma, where I was going to do my second couch surfing experience. <laughs> So this is what's known in Petaluma as beer o'clock and it's this fine Alaskan amber beer that's uh, JC's favourite beer. What are, you, what are you cooking up in the kitchen tonight then? Beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff, fantastic. I loaded the bike up and headed from Petaluma to San Francisco because I needed some help with uh, my bike. I needed the valve clearances checked and not being a technical person I really didn't know how to do it. So I posted a request for help uh, on one of the, the bike websites that I was a member of. One of its members, very kindly, not only offered to help me work on the bike, but also gave me a room for the night, and so it was heading to San Ramon in the Bay Area of San Francisco to meet Paul. So I finally made it to San Ramon, where I'm here with Paul, who is a, um, a jet mechanic. That's Paul, who was, who was so kindly offered to help um, me work on this bike and get it ship shape for Mexico. And we've been out all day sourcing parts and plugs and things and this is the bike that's been stripped down so that uh, the valve clearances can be checked. With my bike now clean and fixed, I headed south with the idea of riding the beautiful Pacific Coast Highway, heading down to St. Louis Obispo. But on the way, I wanted to pass the Big Sur and most importantly, drop into Carmel and see if I could hook up with Clint Eastwood.
been one winding my way down the Pacific Coast Highway 101 and I've reached the little town, the beautiful little town of Carmel in California. I've just checked into a nice little inn, uh, principally because they knocked about $50 off the room price for me, which was, uh, which was nice. And I've just wandered down here to the beach looking for Clint Eastwood, but he's not around at the moment. Carmel is famous for uh, being Clint Eastwood territory. He was the mayor of Carmel for quite a few years. He still lives here apparently and owns several properties, um, not least of which are a couple of uh, restaurants and a bar in town, which I've checked out and it's called the Hog's Breath Inn. And in the Hog's Breath Inn you can get you know, dirty Harry burgers and a fistful of fries and all that usual tacky touristy stuff. Uh, so who in the right mind would uh, would go and eat there and drink there? Yep, that's where I'm going to go tonight. I'm going to do the touristy stuff and I'm going to go and have a beer in the Hog's Breath Inn and I'll probably have a dirty Harry Burger because well, you have to do that kind of stuff. So it's now 10 to 8 at night and after locking myself in a way in my hotel room for hours on end uh, getting up to do with my blog, I'm now going in search of Clint so I'm going to go and find the Hog's Breath Inn and uh, see if he's in and buy him a drink. So here we are, Hog's Breath Inn, got right here. Um, so is, is Clint in tonight? No, but yeah. No, it's me here in second. Is he, is he going to come down because he knows I'm here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. If he, if he comes down, what, what does he normally drink? Marlo, let me tell you. Ah, well, in that case, I'll have a pale ale. All right. <laughs> if he comes down, I'll buy him a drink. After a great night in Carmel, I got up in the morning and headed off down the Pacific Coast Highway, make my, making my way to San Luis Obispo. It was a lovely hot day. I had my visor up when I had an altercation with a flying insect. I was doing about 55 miles an hour and luckily I had my sunglasses on when suddenly something smashed through my glasses, took the lens out, embedded itself inside my helmet and proceeded to sting me non-stop. Uh, it took me a while to pull over to one side, you know, get the side stand down, turn the engine off, get off the bike, take my gloves off, unbuckle my helmet, by which time, uh, whatever it was, was having a real go at my head. So, a word of warning, be careful when you're riding with your visor up. This is a lesson to learn. It's very important when you're riding, keep your visor down, because something just flew into my visor. Stung me, it must be a wasp or somewhere on horn or something. Bloody hurts. Well, I won't be doing that again in a hurry. And I couldn't get off the road to stop the stinging. So this is San Luis Obispo. And I've come and tapped a street market on it. Great. Uh, barbecue galore. <laughs> believe it but this is the queue for the barbecue it's about bloody miles long look it goes on and on and this is this is for a barbecue look at it yeah and they're still in a queue this is still the queue Oh, there's two queues now. Excuse me. This, this on the left is still the queue. This must be a damn good barbecue, that's all I can say. There's a queue, see? Down here. Still queuing all the way up to here. So this, this, is a this is really is an amazing street market and they don't do it once a year you know they did this every Thursday every Thursday I could come down here and I could uh, check out the Gay and Lesbian Alliance or I could go and get my dreams my dreams interpreted see
What a great place. After a fascinating stay in San Luis Obispo, I headed east towards Bakersfield, where I was going to have my third couchsurfing experience. And you know, when you're couchsurfing, you meet some amazing people. And Carl and Francine, my hosts in Bakersfield, were no exception. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to meet a kinder, more giving, more generous couple. Here we are back in the kitchen where Carl and Francine live because they spend all the time cooking and usually for vast hordes of people who descend upon them, sometimes without notice. But look, look at this, this is a whole bag of garlic. Francine puts garlic in everything, including the coffee. And the <laughs> I'm making a, a Greek salad dressing, it's a garlic salad dressing. Wow, Yes. it smells fantastic already. So here we are in Bakersfield on top of uh, the most expensive hotel um, in the city and it's steaming hot, about low 90 degrees and I'm with my, uh, my couch surfing friends, I'm just come out for a beer and this is, this is Carl, say hello Carl, hello. and there's Francine, and Andre, Cheers. and Maria from Austria oh, and this is Charles. Hello, how you doing? Halfway across the Mojave Desert and um, on the way to Las Vegas, and just stopped for some water. And thank God, the Americans had the presence of mind to build a, a rest stop, toilets. There's even vending machines and a bit of shade, which is just what you need because it's, it's baking out here. 25 past eight in the morning and it's about 90 degrees. So hopefully I'll be in Las Vegas in about an hour and 20 minutes. Oh God, I'm so thirsty. 